Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. It's Wednesday, 11 3 2021, and we have a three pack of news for you today. Oh, I am so excited to get into it. And what? SpongeBob! What'd you do to Mr. Pumpkin? Well, since you're here, Squidward, we'll give you the new member initiation. That bastard. All right, folks. Um,. Let's get into uh, this news after I remind you that we do have a nice little giveaway going on right now for Primetober. Uh, you can win a Switch OLED bundle. You just need to be subscribed to the channel. Also, if you win, you get to choose a charity of your choosing. We will obviously have to vet that charity, and we will donate $100 to that charity. So really, really cool. You get to win something, a little prize pack for yourself, and you get to help somebody out this holiday season. Pretty sweet deal. All right, so our first story deals with my good friend, my good buddy Opal, the one who likes to show me dancing on his channel whenever he talks about me. I mean, the one time he talked about me. Uh, Mr. RGT85. Um, from what I could tell, I've never really had a real conversation with the guy outside of a couple um, exchanges in like live chats and Twitter and all that. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, he had put up a video today saying that Nintendo is going after him it's a little bit of a hyperbole statement in so much that um nintendo isn't like attempting to take out his channel but nintendo did do something that i find to be really weird see rgt85 is not a nintendo ambassador i'm not a nintendo ambassador in fact I'll probably never be a Nintendo ambassador. I don't like having restrictions on what I'm able to do as a content creator. I also don't want to be told, Nate, even though you're 35 years old, you're not allowed to have some drinks on live stream because, hey, that doesn't go along with Nintendo's image. Again, just not something I'm really interested in worrying about. I'd rather just be me and, you know, what comes may come. And RGT85 is similar in that he doesn't want to have any sort of restrictions on what he does at his channel. So, uh, he was able, though, to get his hands on an early copy of Metroid Dread. Uh, now, he didn't make any content before the release date, so there was nothing that came out ahead of time. But he did release a review of the game on the same day the game came out. Now, at this point, review embargoes and everything were passed. And honestly, at this point, there's nothing Nintendo should be able to actually do about it because, hey, the review came out on the same day the game can already be played by anybody. How does Nintendo know he didn't just rush through the game in the morning and bust out a review same day? That would be absolutely insane, but not impossible. So what can Nintendo really do about it unless they know for a fact that that copy was illegally obtained, which, by the way, I'm not saying that he illegally obtained it. He definitely has legit copies of Metroid Dread. So here's the thing. Nintendo tried to go after his review and tried to get it taken down with a copyright strike. Uh, YouTube manually reviewed this copyright strike without RGT85 even knowing and basically said, nope, we believe that this video is well within fair use and that was it. Now, apparently there's been an email exchange going back and forth between Nintendo and YouTube and RGT85 was technically privy to this conversation. The problem is it's on an email account that he basically doesn't check. Now, I would assume this email is either the login for his YouTube channel that he doesn't use as a public email or whatever a former email account that just isn't something that he accesses often but he was reading it because he got a, a deal in there for a one-up arcade unit or something like that so he happened to be to catch this email exchange and he is really confused why Nintendo thought it was okay to come after his channel for something that's clearly well within legal fair use. Now, YouTube took care of everything for him, so RGT doesn't have to, like, you know, worry about any lawsuits or anything like that or worry about trying to fight against Nintendo on such a claim. But the fact that Nintendo's lawyers or whoever their YouTube team is had the audacity to try to claim a review on the day of release was rather fishy. Obviously, YouTube agreed and took care of it. And this is a, a, a case where, for all my gripes with YouTube lately, hey, you know, YouTube isn't always all bad. And in this situation, it was nice that RGT85 didn't even know this was a thing. So that's cool. Um, still, Nintendo, what are you doing, man? You used to be 
really, really strict with YouTube, you know, back when you had, not your partner program, but yeah, like your whole white list of games and your, all, all this stuff happening before where you join and become a partner but can only show gameplay from like a select, like five video games. It was really ridiculous. Uh, and I never joined that either. So bottom line is Nintendo used to be bad. They let up. I show literally anything I want. And the weird thing about him getting dinged for it is at my channel, we literally obtained a Switch OLED over a week early and made a bunch of videos on that and Nintendo never bothered to claim a single one. They didn't come at me for any of it. They just let that coverage go. Now Nintendo is a lot more protective of video games versus hardware, but in this case, this was same day release review. There is no restrictions legally on that. So I don't know what Nintendo was thinking. Uh, someone at Nintendo probably doesn't like RGT85 for some reason. I don't know what that reasoning could be. Um, I'm sure there's people at Nintendo that don't like me as well, but it is what it is. We're not here to please them. We're here to entertain and deliver information to you guys. So it is what it is. I'm glad RGT85 is all fine and didn't have anything really negative happen from it. Uh, and you got to make a fun little video out of it. I'm sure I would have did the same thing if I realized Nintendo tried to take down one of my videos that was clearly within legal rights to be on. If it had been one of my early Switch OLED videos, I could have understood that, but yeah, that, that's not what happened here. So, hey, it is what it is. Let's move on to our next story. So next up, we have a big rumor. So you guys know about that Mario movie coming from Illumination Studios. So supposedly coming in late 2022. Uh, it's going to be hopefully a good time, right? We, we know who the voice actors are. Everyone, LOL, Chris Pratt as Mario. It is what it is. Uh, we can't change that at this point. So um, I'm kind of looking forward to this movie. I actually think it's going to be pretty good. And it looks like, according to giant freaking robot it's a website that has gotten a ton of this information correct in the past with shows and movies uh they are saying that we are going to get a new donkey kong movie that's right so you get the mario movie next year donkey kong i would presume would be for like 2023 uh and this basically creates our own nintendo cinematic universe this is really really cool if that is happens to be the plan and we know seth rogan is voicing donkey kong and they do say this will be a seth rogan voiced donkey kong uh movie so you can call it a spin-off of the mario movie but really it's just the beginning of the donkey kong movie franchise so I think this is really, really cool. We haven't seen Donkey Kong really talk much, really, ever. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with this. I happen to be someone who tends to enjoy um, some of Seth Rogen's animated work. Um, he's involved a little bit in Big Mouth. I find what he does in there pretty good. Uh, and also, he's in... Um, Obviously, he did the Sausage Party thing, and I, I really enjoyed Sausage Party. So, while I don't think his movie work is, is necessarily carried over for him very well over the years, even though he had some really nice early movies, I do think that uh, his animated work is well worth watching. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Uh, but yeah, for right now, that seems to be uh, what we could expect potentially in 2023. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep up on this for whenever Nintendo uh, decides or decides not to announce this movie. Which I would assume they'd probably announce it around the time Mario. But you don't even have a trailer for Mario yet. So around the time that one's coming out, I think they would start pushing their, their next one. So our last story is about just a little game. Just a small IP from Nintendo, you know. Super Smash Bros. Uh, Masahiro Sakurai is still doing his weekly Famitsu columns, at least uh, through this year. I think he's done at that point and retiring from Famitsu. But um, he answered a bunch of questions in Famitsu Magazine uh, around the future of Super Smash Bros. Because obviously after you've done Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, you're like, yeah, that, that that's probably it. And here are some direct quotes. These have been obviously translated. Uh, let's see what it says here. It says, I'm not thinking of a sequel. I'm not thinking of it every time. However, I can say with certainty that this, however, I can't say with certainty that this would be the end of Smash, which of course you can't say that because Nintendo controls the property uh, and it's still 20 million. I don't think Nintendo wants this to be the end. I need to think whether I must release a Smash game or not, even if I have to do something that would disappoint users. So he is acknowledging that whatever the next Smash game would be would probably end up disappointing people. It likely would not have the entire roster of Ultimate as an example. So he's pretty confident that if he does do another one, yeah, it's probably going to be disappointing to some. And can he accept that disappointment? Uh, because... It, it, it's tough to, to pull off all the IP rights Nintendo did for the greatest gaming crossover of all time. He says, 
I currently don't see a path where Smash can be produced without myself. This is interesting because we thought, obviously, he was setting up to for like Bandai Namco or someone else to run it. But here's what he had to say about that. He said, honestly, we did actually try to leave it to someone else, but it didn't go well. So he tried to leave Smash Bros to another party. It didn't work. Hence, he's back. And hence, he doesn't think Smash can be made without him. This is very, very telling because we've been talking this whole time after Ultimate that Sakurai should step away and let Ben and Apko or somebody else take care of it and he can go do what he wants to do. And here he's saying, hey, look, Smash can't exist without me. We tried it without me. It didn't work. It is what it is. I have to be there or Smash doesn't exist. Um, that's very telling. It's also... A little sad to think that it's so tied to one person that it's not possible we can get somebody else. We have had this event, like Legend of Zelda was really tied to Miyamoto, but we saw other people over the year, other directors and producers, able to do some magical things with it. We've seen the same thing with Mario. It's kind of weird that Smash is that one game that, I don't know, maybe because Sakurai's a bit of a perfectionist, but you just can't seem to get it right without him. So, I, I mean... On one hand, this is great news for Smash people because if, you, if another Smash Bros. game does come out, Sakurai is going to be right there. Uh, it's also a little bit saddening to me because I would like to see Sakurai be able to do the games he wants to do rather than the games that he and Nintendo and fans might pressure him into, if that makes sense. Um, he says, if the series were to continue, I have to talk with Nintendo and have a debate on whether it will succeed or not. I must think about this topic seriously. So right now, there's not plans for another Smash Bros. game. He's not being paid or contracted to make another one. Because remember, Sakurai does not technically work at Nintendo. He's a contract employee with his own studio. Um, but he does say, you know, hey, he's got to talk about it with Nintendo. And whether or not it's worth it. Because he knows there's going to be backlash. The next Smash game would not be as big as Ultimate. So he knows there's backlash. And do you think it would be successful enough to deal with that backlash to get it out the door? Uh, basically, he makes it sound like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is really the best game to leave the series on. But also, hey, people love Smash they're going to want more Smash. Nintendo's going to want more Smash. He knows this is a thing. He knows there's no way this IP can die. And he also knows the IP can't be made without him. So he's kind of one of those, I'm not walking away. I'm not retiring from Smash. I got to think about this super seriously before I even get into work on it. Now, this might give him time to make another game or two in between. But reality is that Sakurai obviously takes this very, very seriously because this is his baby. In the same way Kirby was, except Kirby's been proven to be made by other people. Sakurai is saying they tried it and it didn't work. He can't walk away from Smash. So, that being said, I do think it might be a decade. Yes, it's a long time, but it might be a decade before we get a new Smash game. That'll give him some time to do the things he wants to do. But still, I think it's very telling that, hey, he tried to give it to somebody else. It didn't work. That's, that's crazy to me. Because it's a fighting game. But it's also a fighting game unlike any other. And Sakurai is probably the reason for that oftentimes we tend to give some of these producers and all that more credit than they deserve compared to the rest of the team and the directors and everything but in this case sakurai deserves a ton of credit for super smash bros he literally said we tried to do it without me and it didn't work so like screw it it can't exist without me it is what it is so yeah we'll have to see what the future of smash bros ultimately is again I think on their next generation platform, they're just going to pile all the DLC of Ultimate in together, maybe up res it to 4K if that's a thing, and throw it out to you guys in a Ultimate Edition. I honestly think they're just going to rerun Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for another generation, and then we'll come back to Smash Bros. again, say not next gen, but the generation after. Some people might think that's crazy, but look at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think they're just going to do that. I think it makes too much sense, and it also gives Sakurai time to do other projects before he seriously considers making a Smash game that's probably going to let some people down while also making some other people excited. So, anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. I had a lot of fun. I uh, hope that you guys are having a lovely day. I'm having definitely an interesting day. Um, we have a new partnership that we just... I uh, went into agreement too that maybe we'll talk about tonight on the Nintendo Prime podcast because that should should be back tonight. I think everything's all set up for that. Yeah, we should be we should be streaming tonight podcast. Yeah. All right folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.